And it's been a day since Alexei Navalny's death and the reactions from across the globe are pouring in. He died in Polo Wolf, one of the world's harshest penal colonies. Navalny was Russian President Vladimir Putin's most formidable opponent and critic in Russia. Alexei Navalny's team has accused the Russian authorities of trying to cover their tracks by refusing to release the body of the dead Kremlin critic to his relatives. Navalny's team says that the family has been notified of the death and that they're waiting for an official death certificate from the authorities along with the return of Navalny's body immediately. After this, his mother was given a telegram addressed to her, which reported the death of Alexei. We continue to wait for the official certificate of death and release of the body, and we demand that the body of Alexei Navalny be returned to his family immediately. In Moscow, people paid their last respects by laying flowers and holding placards and signs of protest. The mourners were detained by the police later and according to the Russian Human Rights Group over 400 people have been detained at the events that were organized in the memory of Navalny across 32 Russian cities. Now to discuss this further we are being joined by Mr David M Herzenhorn who is the author of the book The Dissident Alexei Navalny Profile of a Political Prisoner he is also the Russia Ukraine editor at the Washington Post so thank you so much for joining us on We on World is One Good morning Now the news of Alexei Navalny's death it has gripped everyone's attention not just in Russia but beyond as well the circumstances of his death and the refusal to hand over the body that has raised suspicions what's your take on this Well, the suspicions come from the fact that the Russian government had tried to kill Alexei Navalny before and that he was imprisoned in a as you said harsh penal colony in the Arctic north of Russia. He died suddenly. He had been seen the day before on a video link for a court proceeding, uh joking in good spirits, apparently in good health. So it's uh an understatement to say that there are suspicions when mm-hmm. on the one hand the authorities say that this death was of natural causes and on the other hand refuse to immediately provide uh his body to his family his mother went immediately uh there up north uh, requesting that his remains be turned over to her now of course alexei navalny's imprisonment his transfer to the arctic penal colony all seems suspect there were also in fact reports earlier in which navalny had s- stated how he was made to listen to a pro russian pop artist early in the morning every day people have called it a systemic persecution of the vocal putin critic you've also spoken about how his death in prison was inevitable what's next for russia and any form of opposition that dares to find space in the nation well clearly at this moment with russia attacking ukraine uh, carrying out a brutal war against a country of 40 million people you just reported on the capture of avdivka uh, the russian officials talk about liberating avdivka they're stealing russia uh, ukrainian territory the russians are invading and stealing the territory of ukraine at this moment there is no room for political dissent in russia uh, political um, critics of vladimir putin of the war are either exiled they're arrested in jail or like navalny they're now dead hmm Now when we talk about Alexei Navalny what would you say the were the factors that made Navalny so popular among the people what was it about his ideologies or his form of politics that you think struck a chord with the people So Navalny was a born politician his close friends family will tell you that he was a political animal that from a very early age uh, right after university he started to get involved in local politics a party called Yabloka the name translates as apple it was a liberal progressive party as how we would know it in mainstream politics hoping that there would be real diversity of politics the possibility of freedom and democracy in post soviet russia already though putin and uh, putin's party united russia were tightening their grip navalny was charismatic uh funny just a very cutting sense of humor 
And he had an ability to take uh, small details. He started out crusading against corruption. He was trained in finance and as a lawyer, he would like to read the fine print and then find these vast corruption schemes by big Russian state-owned companies. And he would go to shareholder meetings and be able to illustrate this for regular people who quickly understood that he was fighting for the little guy. Uh, once on a radio show, it was almost by accident, he labeled the Putin's party, the um, United Russia, the party of crooks and thieves. And that became a meme even before we really understood memes as memes. It was, went viral across the country. Uh, everybody reacted to that feeling frustrated. It was a way of um, that it captured the sense of frustration in the country over vast graft and corruption. Uh, Russia, a country that is so rich, for example, in gas and oil, and yet remains very poor for most people uh, struggling to make ends meet. So Navalny had this way of taking, you know, he used to call it poking a stick at these big, powerful officials and how corrupt they were. You'd see his YouTube videos that reached millions of people describing how, for example, the former president, Dmitry Medvedev, had amassed a real estate portfolio worth a billion dollars or more, uh, showing even how he had, you know, expensive Nike sneakers and following that little detail of where his uh, delivery packages were arriving to show these were residences that effectively belonged to him, even if they were um, technically on paper owned by other entities. Uh, the biggest investigation, of course, being in the Black Sea Palace that everyone understands is Vladimir Putin's, but of course is not in Putin's name, and mm -hmm. the Kremlin denies that it is. All the, the gold and the uh, the dancing poles and et cetera, the Italian furniture that were put in there. So he had a way of showing and illustrating for regular people why they were suffering at the hands of a corrupt government. All right. Well, Mr. Hudson, thank you so much for joining us on Vion World is One with your insights on this. For latest news, download the Vion app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.